Hey everybody, sorry it's been such a long time. I know I got really bad about posting there for a while, but I'm back and I'm gonna be trying to post even more than I did before. Today, we're gonna make a nano tank and we're gonna try and make it as naturalistic as possible, getting our supplies from a natural location, specifically a freshwater lake in our area. So, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go get the supplies, come back, put the tank together, and show you guys the whole process. Here we go. This is the tank we're gonna be making. It's pretty small, so I think the only thing we're going to be putting in here is probably some blue really shrimp. But I'm going to try and get the shallow stream or river motif going on with some rocks and some driftwood that we can collect. Here we go. So we made it to the lake. We are now going to find some good rocks for our nano tank, some good driftwood, and possibly some plants. I haven't decided yet if I want to go fully aquatic plants or just partially aquatic plants yet. We'll see what my selection looks like. As the kids frolic and play in the water, I'm gonna walk along the shoreline here, see if I can find any pieces of driftwood that I really like, any good looking rocks. I don't know if I'm gonna take any of these plants home. I probably won't, just because I don't know what they are or how well they will adapt to being in a tank versus being out in the wild. When making a nano tank, you always could bring stuff home from the wild. I don't know how I feel about that because one, it would be cool to have a very, very naturalistic tank based on the area that you're in. Also, you're taking wild animals out of their home and the biome that they understand and know. It's also been proven that not a lot of animals taken straight from the wild do very well in captivity. So I would say stick with the tropical fish you can buy at stores. Just go with that. Really not a whole lot of good looking rock here, but I think it will do well for my shallow stream slash river biome that I'm going for. Tons of these snail shells, and I think I will take some of them as decoration. Also, when adding things from nature into your tank, you're gonna wanna make sure to treat them before you do. Otherwise, you could bring some pretty nasty diseases or bacteria, or even some uh, nasty little critters that you might not want into your tank in if you're not careful. So boil the pieces that you wanna put in, maybe treat them with bleach water, but be careful, because you could really mess up your tank otherwise. I'm a big fan of these type of rock formations. Maybe this is what I'll try and do in that tank on a much smaller scale. So we've got a good amount of driftwood and some good rocks in here. Some of this is not gonna go, in, obviously some of this is not going in the nano tank, it's bigger than the tank itself. But I think I'm gonna cut down some of these pieces and maybe put them in there, create maybe a waterfall effect with some of the rocks we've got. So we got home, we started the tank, and I took some of the substrate from one of my very well-established tanks and spread it around under the substrate that I'm gonna be using in this tank to give this tank a little bit of a kickstart. I'm using this fluorite black substrate in this tank. I haven't really used it a whole lot before and I'm really excited to see how it does. You wanna spread your substrate out in a good layer that's gonna cover the bottom. You can build it up in certain places to give more texture to the bottom of the tank, but really we're just looking for good even coverage first. After you get your hardscape set in place like we just did, then you go back and add in your plants. We're gonna go grab some from our other tanks, just some cultures and snippings we already have, and see what we can figure out for in here. Here we've got some Ludwigia and a Java Fern. We're gonna try and place those in this tank just to give it a little bit more depth, and you know, hominess for the shrimp. Normally for the java fern that I'm putting in this tank, I would glue it to a rock or a piece of wood to hold it down and let it anchor there better, but I don't have any super glue and we live in a small town where nothing is open past 10 at night. So if we're gonna have to improvise for now, maybe go back later and try it again. So you can see that as we're doing this, we're just filling gradually to get the plants in, to get them looking how we want them. And we had to fight the stinking wood, every time we filled it up, even though I thought the wood was waterlogged when we got it, it just continued to float. So we constantly had to push it back down, shove it down into the substrate, shove it under a rock, but 
Uh, thankfully, we eventually got it to where we wanted it to be. So we think we got our plants and our wood and our rock finally where they need to be after fighting with the wood because it kept wanting to float. I know it'll take a couple days to really waterlog it, so I thought it would have been waterlogged already since I pulled it, you know, out of the water. Uh, but I'm going to wait to add any critters in here at least until this water clears up, so we'll probably give it to morning, but I'm really liking the setup we've got. This LED lamp is really going to provide the exact amount of light we need for it to give the plants enough to grow. So we'll update in the morning. So it's been almost 24 hours since we started this project and man it's looking real good. I've got a couple of things in there like this little mystery snail so far but I think I'm going to add some more because it's looking awesome. Now typically I would put the shrimp in and let them acclimate to the water, but the water I used was the same water from the tank that I pulled them out of, so they were already acclimated to this water. We put a pretty wide range of shrimp in here size-wise just to see what would happen. Here you can see some of the adults with some of the teenagers, and there's some baby babies in here, but you won't see them until a little bit later. One of the things that I love the most about the blue really shrimp is their variation in color. You can get these really, really dark blues almost down to blacks up to the light blues like you see on that log right now. And some of them are even in between with black bodies and blue tails and such. Uh, they're just gorgeous. They're some of my favorite shrimp ever. This tank has since cleared up even more in the weeks after we've made it. And it's one of my favorite tanks that I've got in the house. The shrimp are still adjusting to their life in it, so they hide a lot. But usually every morning we turn on the lights and there's five or six of them waiting on top for us. It has been one of my favorite builds that we've done so far. 